What's up everybody? A bit of backstory on today's video. A couple weeks ago I filmed a summer bunny update as many of you have requested. Before I could edit it my rabbit Hazel came down with sudden stasis symptoms and my normal treatments just weren't able to pull her out of it and she died on the way to the vet. So needless to say, I've been pretty depressed about all of this. First, losing my rabbit Timmy during hernia surgery, and then about a month later, Hazel. That leaves me with just one breeding doe. So I put out some feelers and I did find a couple nice breeders who were willing to help me. And one of them had a four month old hollow knob doe who was available. It means the world to me that wild clover rabbitry is willing to help me out in what has probably been my darkest hour in this rabbit adventure of mine. I'm extremely eager to meet them as well as the bunny. Which brings me to today's video. We are going to take a road trip to the Columbus, Ohio area to pick up the bunny but also to visit my aunt and uncle because they happen to live in the same area. We haven't visited them for about 13 years. I know that's terrible. And my youngest son has never even been to their house. So we are long overdue for a visit. This video is a bit different style than what you're used to, but I hope you enjoy it. So let's go.
So here she is. Isn't she beautiful? She was a bit timid last night, so I left her alone and I let her settle in. But this morning, her personality was ignited. She's extremely social, which I know personality plays a huge part in, but also I know she was very well socialized at Wild Clover Rabbitry. She is a false dwarf doe, which that's actually my favorite. You see her longer ears here. And false dwarfs typically have a very narrow brow width, but she doesn't, which is another reason why I like her. She's got a nice massive head and she's got some good mass to her body as well. And because she is a false dwarf, not only should she have an easier time kindling, having babies, but also there will be no peanuts. So a peanut bunny is when they get a dwarf gene from the mom and a dwarf gene from the dad. So they have two dwarf genes and they just can't survive for long. But when you have a false dwarf doe who has no dwarf gene, then there are no peanuts. So that is a blessing as well. If you're wondering about her color, that makes two of us. She has an extremely colorful pedigree. And also her dad is a Vienna Mark, so she may also be one. Now a Vienna Mark, the Vienna gene is what creates blue-eyed whites. If you've seen a white Holland lot that has the blue eyes, that is a blue-eyed white and that is caused when they have two Vienna genes. Now if they have only one of these Vienna genes, they can either hide that and you really have no idea that they are carrying it, or they can have white spots. They might be on their face, it might be on their body, it might be on their ears. Now she does have a little white area on the top of her head. And she's not going to turn to the camera right now. But trust me, she has it. And she looks like she's falling asleep. So that white spot and the fact that her dad is a Vienna Mark and has the Vienna gene tells me that there is a good chance she also carries the Vienna gene. Now, I worked with Blue-Eyed Whites and Vienna Marked Hollands years ago, and I didn't have the right bunnies, and I wasn't sure I wanted to try that again, but when this girl became available, and I kind of fell in love with her, I stumbled back into the Vienna gene, quite possibly. So that is going to take a bit of test breeding to figure out whether or not she does indeed have it, and I will have to keep careful records so I know which bunnies possibly have it and which don't. Now for her coloring, which there is very little of, I'm thinking that she might be a blue point. So a sable point Holland will have brownish ears and muzzle, and a blue point Holland, which is a dilute version of a sable point, will have grayish ears. It's called blue, and on the muzzle too. Her eyes are a gray color, which is typical of a dilute, but the iris in the center, when the light hits it just right, has a reddish cast, and that can indicate the sable gene. Based upon her phenotype, which is what we can see in the coloring, and her genotype, the genes that we know she carries based upon her pedigree, I really think she's a blue point. So aside from her mystery coloring, I don't have a name for her and I'm hoping you guys can help me out with that. She came from wild clover rabbitry, so I tossed around the idea of naming her Clover, although I did have a blue doe out of Cora who I named Clover. If you have any ideas what to name her, please put those in the comments below. After all the sadness this summer and being down to one breeding doe, I'm very excited to have another one and I am grateful to Wild Clover for giving me this opportunity and helping me out. And I look forward to future videos with this little girl, who's not so little anymore, are you? Speaking of future videos, you're not going to want to miss the next one because when we got home last night, literally about a half hour afterwards, Cora had her babies. And I happen to have my camera in here with me and I caught most of it on video, but you'll have to wait until the next video to see that. 
So make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you next time. Who I named Clover. What are you stomping at, Mr. Moosey? Is she pretty? He likes you. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Oh, it's okay. So I'm not sure if I, what? Moosey, stop. Moosey, I'm really not sure what to name her. Stop it, Moose.